logo there and you press it and guess what it's TV on the radio right and that's what we're doing right here right now with the great Michael Imhotep yes he's, he's, he's just you know He's just one of my favorite people. He has his own oh, thanks, show Charlene. every Sunday. Um, yeah, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. The I, African I just, History Network show. I love smart people. Oh, thank it's, you. It's Black Me History too. Month, shortest yes. month of the year, of course. Well, that but, had... but Black History <laughs> Month is every month if you're black. It's all black. Well, well, I love your shirt. Oh, thank you. Thank now, you. tell me about this shirt. I mean, is oh, this man, an African this is, pattern? This is, yeah, it is. I don't know exactly which one. You know, somebody told me it's to order gorgeous. this. It's I was going to an event. I was speaking at an event in uh, San Diego, uh, The Return of the Gods, last uh August, uh -huh. August 2018, and uh, my girlfriend at the time told me to get this, uh, order this shirt. <laughs> okay, and you did. <laughs> yeah, I ordered this. She yeah. told you to do. Right, right. That was smart. You're a smart man. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, this is uh, African American History Month. It's February once again. Now, now you mentioned the uh, it being the shortest month of the year. So it's very important for people to understand. Uh, this was something that we created for ourselves. Dr. Carter G. Woodson, 1926, created Negro History Week. Uh, he was the co-founder of the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, uh, September 9th, 1915. And 1915 was the 50th year uh, anniversary of the Civil War ending, which ended June 2nd, uh, 1865. And then you have the uh, emancip you have the uh, 13th Amendment, which was ratified December 6th, 1865. And it was, uh, it was adopted December 18th, 1865. So uh, in, in 1915 in Chicago, there was a three-week symposium that chronicled and celebrated the accomplishments and achievements of African Americans over that 50-year period of time from 1865 to 1915. And uh, it's at the symposium that Dr. Carter G. Woodson gets the idea to create an organization to uh, research, preserve, and document the history and accomplishments of African Americans and also uh, African people on the continent of Africa for that matter. So uh, he created, along with some co-founders, the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, September 9, 1915. 1916, uh, he founded the Journal of Negro History, which was a uh, historical digest where African-American scholars, we could publish our own historical papers because a lot of the the uh, white historical journals did not want to publish our papers and deal with the topics we wanted to deal with. Uh, we also know that uh, 1915, 1916, this is during World War One, and this is at the beginning of the, of the Great Migration. The Great Migration is basically from about 1915 to 1970. You have about six million African Americans migrating from the South, up North, and out West. And this is uh, between uh, World War One, starting in World War One, 1914 to 1918. So you have all this taking place at, at this time, and you have um, Dr. Carter G. Woodson is an educator, and he understands. He taught in high schools. He uh, uh, taught at Howard University. Uh, he was the uh, second African American to get a Ph.D. from Harvard in 1912. He got a Ph.D. in the 20s. You have Universal Negro Improvement Association, Marcus Garvey. Right, and we know Garvey is convicted. Say in the name of that again. Universal Negro Improvement Association, the <laughs> UNIA. That, that's, and that was when. Well, well, that starts in 1914 in Negro Jamaica. Negro Improvement. Yeah, Universal Negro Improvement Association. This is the largest mass movement of African Americans in the history of this country. I mean, he has somewhere between four million to six million uh, members in the UNIA. Uh, so Garvey was a giant, but you have this taking place at the same time as the Harlem Renaissance uh, coming out of. Uh, World War I, 1914, 1918, 1919, you have what's known as the Red Summer. In the Red Summer, you had over 25 major race riots in this country because um, when, these, when these white men go and fight in World War I, it's about 5 million men, most mm -hmm. of them white, they go fight in World War I. When they leave, they have jobs. When they come back, the jobs are being filled by African Americans migrating up north largely and immigrants coming to this country. So when these men come back, the, all, you have the, all these race riots that break out, okay? And you, you had African-American men who served in World War I also. They learned how to fight. They learned how to shoot and defend themselves. So they fought back also, okay? And then we see 1921, we see the uh, race riot in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Black Wall Street, June 1st, 1921. 1923, we see the uh, January 1923, we see the Rosewood Massacre of 1923. Yes. So an entire black town was wiped out because a white woman lied on a fictitious black man. 
when we deal with Rosewood. So there was a movie made in 1997. I've watched, I watched that. Yeah, well, well, I've seen no, it a couple times. Well, yeah, so I, I, I've seen it recently. And I, how, how accurate is it? It, it? It's fairly accurate. Now, there's some, there's some historical inaccuracies that you see in the film, but those characters, like Aunt Sarah played by Esther Roll and, uh, and her son played by Don Cheadle, these are real characters. Now, the character of Man played by uh, Ving Rhames, that's a fictitious character. Mm -hmm. That was somebody that was totally made up, probably by... Um, John Singleton, the director, to create a hero, because the way the, the the way the story actually ends out historically is different than what we see in the film. Okay. So he was trying to get it far. Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You, well, he wanted to create. Well, first of all, you got to get people to come see the movie. Right. Okay. So he's trying to create this hero, and it's, it's quite possible the character of man was a composite character. Meaning that it was it, see, the actions of man was a compilation of different actions of real people. It's quite mm -hmm. possible that happened. Mm -hmm. So, um, so 1926 Negro History Week is created by Dr. Carter G. Woodson, and he chose these uh, uh, second week in February. He he didn't choose February because it's the shortest month of the year. February has 28 days. Historically, when we look at the Julian calendar, which was introduced around 46, uh, somewhere around 46 B.C. or so, uh, the Julian calendar. All, all, the, all the months had 30 days. And Julius Caesar, the Julian calendar is named after Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar wanted his month, which we call July, which is named after Julius Caesar, he wanted his month to have more days. So he took one day from what we call February, added it to July, so July would have 31 days. Now, Augustus Caesar did not want to be outdone by Julius Caesar. So Augustus Caesar took one day from the month of what we call February, added it to, to his month that we call August. So August has 31 days. So this is why February has 28 days. But Dr. Carter G. Woodson chose February because the second week in February contains the, the birth dates of Abraham Lincoln, April 12th, and the assumed, I'm sorry, February 12th, and the mm -hmm. assumed the assumed birth date of Frederick Douglass, February 14th, because Frederick Douglass was a former slave. He didn't know his birth date. He didn't know the exact year he was born. So he estimated it was either 1817 or 1818. He took the assumed birthday to February 14th. Valentine's so, Day. Valentine's Day. So there were already celebrations going on. African Americans were already having celebrations across the country. In February. During, du during that second week in February, commemorating those two birthdays. So Dr. Carter G. Woodson, he, he inserted his new celebration within that period of time. So it was never supposed to be the only time of the year we study our history. He, uh, uh, um, he felt that they should be celebrating in schools, but he felt that school children should show during that second week of February what they have been studying year round. He said it didn't make sense to, 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 to teach our history one month out of the year and the rest of the year they're learning white history. Well, you can't cram it into one month. Well, you can't you can't cram it into one month or a and, year. And, 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 it's to be continuous. Well, well, it's continuous, but it's a celebration. This is the mistake people make, is to, is, is to reflect on, uh, on our accomplishments of our past, to look forward to the future. It's, it's a celebration. And also, when we study the, 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 the origins of the creation of Af what's known as now as African American History Month, it was also supposed to uh, encompass the accomplishments and achievements of African people on the continent of Africa also. So it wasn't just looking at 1619 to the present in this country. It's also supposed to study our history on the continent of Africa. So each year, there's a theme from the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. People can go to their website, asalh.org, asala.org, asalh.org. They have resources there. They have teaching tools that you can use in the classroom. You don't have to re you don't have to recycle the same fifteen to twenty sanitized Negroes each year. This is what we do. Okay. So this year's theme is Black Migrations because we know that August 20, 1619 commemorates the four hundredth year anniversary of that Dutch warship bringing those twenty some odd uh, Africans into Jamestown, Virginia. Now it's important when we understand history, and I just did a presentation for uh, the city of Inkster. Uh, the city of Inkster, they actually sell up. They actually have twenty eight events for the month of February. Really? Yes, it's fantastic. I, I, I uh, was a keynote speaker at their inaugural, at their kickoff event, uh, mm -hmm. February first, and uh, people if people go to cityofinkster.com, cityofinkster.com, and right on the homepage, homepage, click on events, so they should have a calendar there. Mm -hmm. So, even though August twentieth, sixteen nineteen, Jamestown, Virginia, did happen, African people had been here for thousands of years prior to that in this land. If we just look at enslaved Africans. The Spanish were taking Africans into the Spanish territories like Florida and South Carolina in the 1520s. 
This is 100 years before Jamestown, Virginia. Okay, uh, we see that in 1526, and then we also see uh, 1513, uh, Juan Ponce de Leon, the Spanish conquistador, comes into Florida, and Juan Garrido, who's a man of African descent, is with him. Okay, so even though August 20th, 1619 did happen, we were here for thousands of years before that. And if people, you know, a lot of people listen to my show, they see my videos, you get the book, The First Americans Were Africans, Documented Evidence by Dr. David M. Hotel. His book thoroughly documents that history. And so, you document a lot, and we have a caller. Okay, that's Tony right. wants to talk to you. Okay. So take a deep breath. Okay. Because you can get a lot in a short time. Yes. Tony, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for taking my call, Charlene. Great show. All right, thanks. Uh, I wanted to ask you real quick, um, on the pyramid wall, uh, one of the pyramid wall that was in the pyramid wall, it says, know thyself. Mm -hmm. um, in, your, in your research, uh, who, what, who quoted that? Who Man, quoted know thyself. I mean, that's a bit, I don't, I, I don't well, uh, I, I'm not exactly sure who originally said that. Uh, I've heard it attributed to M. Hotep, the, the the philosopher, the architect. I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not exactly sure if it was him originally, but that that is often quoted. Man, know thyself. George G. M. James talks about that in Stolen Legacy. Uh, stolen Legacy, uh, Greek philosophy, is Stolen uh, Egyptian philosophy, Stolen Legacy. Thank you, Michael. Thank yeah. you, Shirley. No problem. Oh, thank you, Tony. Thank, thank you. you for listening. Thank you. So, okay. so very quickly. Uh, so this year's theme is is Black Migrations and is dealing with uh, understanding forced migrations, voluntary migrations of African Americans in this country throughout, throughout history, but especially the early 1900s to 1970 called the Great Migration. And the Great Migration is totally going to shift, uh, help, help to shift the population of African Americans. We know many of us are being ran out of the South because of white domestic terrorism. Uh, many of us are ran off of our farms you know, from 1920 to 1975, we lost 14 million acres of land, okay? In, in, in 1930, there were about 920,000 African-American farmers. By 1939, it drops down to about 680,000. And we're being, many of us are being ran out of the South. We're losing our land because we uh, may not be able to keep up the mortgage payments, et cetera. And we're going up north, we're moving into Detroit, Michigan, Gary, Indiana, Chicago, Chicago Illinois. We're looking for a better way of life. We're looking for equal protection under the law, and then we're meeting racism up here, and then you start seeing you do different types of race riots and things like that. Up north, we see it in 1943 right here in Detroit during World War II. 1943 is a huge race riot that took place. Okay, so uh, people, people can go to uh, ASA, ASALH.org, Asala.org, ASALH.org. You can get more information about African American History Month. This year's theme. They have teaching tools as well. And uh, for the month of February, I'm doing a series of lectures at uh, Nandy's Knowledge Cafe every Saturday. Where is that? Uh, 71 Oakman Avenue in Highland Park, Michigan. 71 okay, Oakman. Highland Park. Yep, 71 Oakman Avenue in Highland Park, Michigan, right off of um, right off of Hamilton. So what day is that again? Uh, it, it, it is each Saturday in February. So this coming okay. Saturday is going to be February 9th, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. And uh, this this Saturday's presentation, since the film Black Panther was back in theaters for free February 1st through the 7th and it won the Screen Actors Guild Awards and uh, Guild Award and it's also up for seven Oscars. Uh, this presentation I'm doing... That surprised me actually. Okay. It didn't surprise me. I knew it was going to win some Oscars. Uh, but sometimes when you think something should, it doesn't. Right, right, you know? right. Well, right. we didn't say win, but right, seven well, nominations is yeah, a Yeah, it's up for seven nominations. So the odds are it's going to win yeah, at and least Ruth, one. And Ruth Carter is up for costume design because she did the costume mm -hmm. design for the film. So this, this, this Saturday's presentation is called Wakanda Forever. How Black Panther reconnects African Americans to African culture. Wakanda Forever. How African Americans reconnects. Af uh, how how uh, Black Panther reconnects African Americans to African culture and history. Okay, and uh, visit AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com for more information. It's a free event. Donations accepted. You can also call us 313-462-0003. 313 But the film directly connects us to African culture, history, languages. For instance, the word Wakanda, even though it's a fictitious place, is not a made-up word. Mm -hmm. Wakanda, we see it in the Omaha Ponca language uh, amongst Native Americans. We see it in the Sioux Indian language. It means possess the secret powers, which sounds a lot like black girl magic. Okay, But we also know Wakanda is a Bantu word, and Bantu is a group of about 500 languages spoken in Southern Africa and Central Africa. When we look at the word uh, Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa is Kiswahili. 
Kiswahili is a Bantu language, okay? The Zulu, we see Zulu culture in the film, like the, that, like the hat, the flat disc hat mm -hmm. that Angela Bassett's character, Ramonda, wears. It's called it uh, Isikola. That, that comes from the Zulu. We see the, the, the language that's spoken in the film. It's called Isikosa. Isikosa is a Bantu language. Nelson Mandela spoke Isikosa. Isikosa is spoken in South Africa. So when we see this film, this film reconnects us to African history, language, culture. Uh, it's, it's a deep film on multiple levels. So I'll be breaking down things like that uh, at, uh, this Sunday, this Saturday at Nandy's Knowledge Cafe, 71 what, what Open Avenue. What motivates you? What motivates me? Um, teaching our people, you know, um, you know, you know, people's history and culture teaches them how to deal with the problems of the past in the present and the future to meet the needs of the community. So understanding the impact that right knowledge, right knowledge corrects wrong behavior, understanding that impact that it has on our people. Uh, that's, you know, that's, that's what motivates me is seeing our people progress and, and, and understanding how powerful we are. You know, uh, I, I was doing that. Somebody interviewed me a few days ago and I explained to them, 2016 election, we still haven't figured out what happened. 16.4 million African Americans registered to vote, but only 59.6 voted. A 7 percentage point dropped from 2012, when 66.6 percent .6 of African Americans registered to vote voted. We had about 9.5 to 9.6 million voting. Trump won Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, by only 78,000 popular votes. We had, the, we had the power to stop Trump, but we didn't realize it and still don't know it now. We keep listening to people telling us our vote doesn't matter or we're only 13% of the population. But they can't explain any of this information to you. And they can't explain to you how the Electoral College works either. That operates off the popular vote by state. Okay? So we still haven't figured this out. When we understand how powerful we are, like a uh, little flip said, game over. Oh, my goodness. You know, why, um, why are so many people complacent today about learning black history Absolutely. Teaching their children black history. Very There's no quickly. pressure on the schools anymore. Right. Well, well, what happens is you, your history and culture gives you your values, your interests, and your principles. And it influences your economic empowerment, your political empowerment. You, you, your thoughts create feelings. Your feelings create actions and behaviors. Your actions and behaviors create results. So when we see white supremacy uh, 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 shown to us 24-7, we internalize that. And the reason why many of our people don't fight back is because many of our people don't think that we're fighting for. So as Bantu Stephen Biko said, one of our great South African mm -hmm. freedom fighters, we must take our minds back. He said the most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. So we must take our minds back and understand how much power we have. You're a father of a young child. She'll be two on the 25th of this month. She yeah. was born while I was giving a Black History Month uh, presentation. <laughs> well, maybe <laughs> she, will, uh, she will appreciate that later right. in life. But, but, I, but I'm sure that the mother would have wanted you there. Right, right. But at least you were doing something constructive. Right. So what? how soon will you start teaching your daughter? Oh, I already teach it. I mean, I read uh, African folk tales to her about a uh, uh, last birthday. One of the things I got her was a, a black the go golden books, right? The books for kids. They have a Black mm -hmm. Panther book. Oh, I got wow. that for. I read that to her. So you know, we've already and she started. Loves it. Yeah, yep, yep. She because already started. Because children, I mean, from a young age, right. You mold them. Absolutely, absolutely. Now they can switch up on you at some point in time. Right. But well, I think with the right foundation. Well, you got like like, they, like a sapling tree. You mm -hmm. have those two sticks on the side with a wire connected mm -hmm. to it to, to so keep it grows it straight. up straight. It's the same thing. The same thing with children. Absolutely. Just gotta keep tightening up those wires. Right. Because <laughs> I have one on a tree that started going like this. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, this show just goes by too fast. Absolutely. And I kind of worked a lot in tonight. Right. Um, I'm gonna look at. I want you to text me. You know, or before we leave here, just write down the dates because okay. next Thursday night and every Thursday I will promote what you're gonna have on Saturday. Okay. Where and you're I'll going see the to flyer. be? Because I really believe we should right. uh, cross. And, you know, and, do some cross promotion here. And, and people visit AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Mm -hmm. AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. All the information is right there. All the information is right DVD there. My DVD lectures, all that stuff's right there. And the yes. fact that you don't charge, you don't sell tickets. You just ask for yeah, come on, yeah, come and you on. know, just because something is free doesn't mean you shouldn't put something in the basket. Oh yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, that helps. You're, you're walking the, in, and he's, you know, he's spewing the knowledge, right. and you're walking out of there, and you're taking that knowledge with you, <laughs> and you feel good when you get knowledge because. You remind me so much, and I'll just say this. Okay. Back in 1976, my oh. first PR client was Dick Gregory. Oh, okay. And we did a cross-country run when he did right. Run for Hunger, the Bicentennial Run for Hunger. Right. I we interviewed started, him one time. Yeah, we started in L.A., and we went all the way to New York. So I was wow. Wow. Uh, however many days. It was a long time. Muhammad Ali joined us. Right. I mean, I have That's stories. That's one of my heroes, too, Muhammad Ali. Just, we have stories. I mean, I was so... <laughs> 
I was so lucky. I knew then it was a big deal, right. but not until much later did I realize how fortunate I was to have that one-on-one -on -one and to be such good friends with the Gregory family. His daughter was in my wedding. She was one right. of my bridesmaids. Well, I know Ayana. And, but he used to yep. sit here mm -hmm. and, 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 I mean, sit and talk, and, you know, he could go on all night. He didn't know a clock. Right, right. You know, know. He, but the <laughs> knowledge, and, and you remind me so much. Oh, thank even you. Even though your message is, is a totally different thing. Uh -huh. he, he was all over the map. He talked about the government and this and that. Right, no, but he I've, just knew I've heard stuff. Him. <laughs> and so do you, and I appreciate you so much. Oh, I appreciate and I, you, and too. And I love when you come here. So. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And you'll be back again. Yes. That is Mind Your Business for this rainy Thursday evening. We'll see you again next week. Thank you for watching. Good night, and God bless.